my highlight was definitely playing against Kobe Bryant, the magnitude of a person that he is, and being able to share the court with somebody that I looked up to throughout my whole life. And speaking of great players, you've played a lot against Kyrie Irving. I mean, tell me about that. <laughs> Let's go, Rush! Hey, what's up? It's Xavier Mumford, and I'm here with Rush. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we've got Xavier Mumford in the building. Thanks so much for coming. I've got to give a big shout out to Coco Sports Marketing for bringing you here today. Yeah, shout out to Coco Sports, um, and thanks for having me. Glad to be here with you today. Appreciate it. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Where in the U.S. did you grow up? I was born in Rowland, New Jersey. Um, grew up in Hillside, New Jersey, and went to high school in, in Newark, New Jersey. So just around that epicenter of, of basketball in, in New Jersey, if you, if you really know. And what's it like growing up in New Jersey? Um, it, it, was, it was tough, um, you know, tough winters and, and stuff like that, but uh, it was great. Uh, basketball city to grow up in um, is very competitive, which is a triangle of schools with St. Benedict's, St. Patrick's, and St. Anthony's. Great coaches, high-level players, and it was a competitive nature, especially around that area. And were you a, a Nets fan or a Knicks fan? I was an Allen Iverson fan, so Sixers was my squad growing up, and I, lo I loved his game and everything he represented, so that was, my, that was my squad. And was basketball always the focus for you, or did you play other sports? Uh, basketball was the main focus uh, growing up and, and throughout my early childhood. My dad obviously played, he played football and basketball, as well as my uncle. So they introduced me to the game at an early age, and I just kind of ran with it. I would play football here and there in the street and like in the parks and stuff, but never like organized with a team. But my main focus growing up was strictly basketball. Well, at what age did you realize like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. I really need to focus in and, and try and make that NBA journey. Um, I would say around eighth grade, uh, going into high school, that's when I really realized that I could play basketball and I was pretty good with just, just the, generating the interest uh, from high school coaches and, and different programs. That just really gave me the, the extra confidence that I needed growing up and moving forward into high school. Now you've had a stint in the NBA. Tell me about your, your journey. Um, I had a, a long journey. Um, I came from two junior colleges, finished at University of Rhode Island, played a season in the G League after that. Then that next year I got called up to, to the Memphis Grizzlies and that's when my NBA journey began. Um, uh, it was a great, a surreal, surreal moment, you know. Um, played a season with Memphis and a season with the Bucks, so it's cool. And is there a moment that stands out for you as like a highlight in the NBA? Uh, my highlight was definitely playing against Kobe Bryant. Um, just the magnitude of a person that he is and just being, being able to share the court with somebody that I looked up to throughout my whole life. Um, it was just a surreal, a surreal moment. It's something I'll never forget. And where were you when you heard the news about Kobe? Because, I mean, it was absolutely devastating. I was playing, I was playing in Turkey at the time. Uh, and it was just all over social media, you know. At first, it's just shocking, and you don't really know if it's if it's true or what's going on, and you just want to get more details before you jump to conclusions. But um, after it really came out and was on the news, it still didn't feel real. You know, it still took a minute to to set in. But um, it's just it's devastating. Um, somebody that worked his whole life and then really didn't really get to enjoy his retirement, you know, stuff. And have you got a a favorite Kobe Bryant moment? Um, just sharing the court with them, you know. Uh, we was playing. I was playing against the Lakers, and um, I come off a, a pick and roll, a down screen with like, like a pick and roll, and uh, he Kobe switched onto it, and you know my eyes just lit up, and it's just I didn't even know what to do. I just stopped, stopped, double dribbled, like wasn't even a basketball play anymore, you know, like childish stuff, like. But it was a. Uh, he just told me like, yo, you know, play your game. Like you out here for a reason. Like don't be, don't be, don't be scared. Just play. So see, he obviously like smelled the blood, you know, being a great player that he is, and me being a rookie, he could smell the blood, you know. But uh, he gave me some confidence, pat me on the butt, and we kept playing. And speaking of great players, you've played a lot against Kyrie Irving. I mean, tell me about that. Yeah, growing up in that same area, like I told you, in, in New Jersey, his school was probably 20 minutes away from my school. That's a big rival. So, but even before then, playing playing against each other, AAU on the circuit. Um, but it's, it's he's a great player, you know. As, as as the world can see, he has so many moves and he's so talented. He's, he's a tough guy to guard. One of my favorite players to watch in the NBA. And I mean, you seem like a gentleman, but are, are you someone that talks a little trash on the court? I mean, if it gets to that, you know, I mean, if it gets to that point, I'm never going to shy away from it. You know, I'm never going to back down from it. I feel like it gets my juices going at the same time, you know. 
So I just it's all with competitiveness and just the nature of the game. Who's someone that just runs their mouth? Like who's the biggest trash talker you've come up against? I don't know. I can't even think of anybody right now. Just like just you know, just playing. You you just come across a guy. You know, he want to talk, and me, I can't really hold back. You know, I'm gonna say something. I got really emotional on the court, so I'm just, I let it out. So it's what it is. And what about uh, in terms of like your whole career? Who do you think is like one of the hardest players that you've had to guard? <sighs> this is tough. Um, I would say Steph, Steph Curry. You know, he's just electric and shoot the ball from anywhere, he can shoot from the parking lot. So as soon as he park his car, you gotta start guarding him. You know, like, but uh, just especially off the ball, he moves around, he moves well without the ball. His teammates try to find him. And he's just, he's a great player. He's a handful. Polaroid camera. One, two, three. Actually, you want to, you got some cool tats. You want to even like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. Ooh, let's go. Uh. Top of my game, looking down at the rafters. I had to sun these boys, can't leave them bastards. A lot of dudes, just some undercover actors. I don't fall for it. I'm privy to all your tactics. Yeah, so try again, it's time to take a vitamin Yeah, and vitamin, welcome to the lion's den And I'm Mufasa, a big boss in charge of Coming in like a bull, you see me raising the sky Come on now It was crazy, I took that on my iPhone Really? Yeah, yeah, iPhone 5 Yeah, yeah, yeah So I'll count you in, I'll say 1, 2, 3 and I'll click it Okay, so 1, 2, 3 Alright, so the way it comes out, pull it like this, and comes out like that, and you wait like 30 seconds. Now you've been in Australia for roughly six, seven months or so. Did you know much about Australian culture before you came out here? I had a couple friends that play, that have been playing here for a couple of years, so they, they'll tell me like, yo, you will love Australia, da, da, but I never really took it serious and never really like looked into it. I was just really focused on my career and where I was playing at the time. But um, I didn't. I didn't know much. I knew about like the kangaroos and koala bears and stuff that they tell you on TV. But um, I didn't know much. And have you adapted to the Melbourne culture in the sense that, I mean, we're big coffee drinkers. You know, we drive on the other side of the road. We've got AFL. Have you been to an AFL game or anything like that? No. Nah, yeah. Um, Melbourne has been great. Uh, just even visiting different cities in Australia, flying for different games and stuff. Just. Taking in the whole experience has been great. It's been wonderful. It's a great, it's a great country, you know? Um, very easy living. Everybody speaks English. It's easy to adapt as far as like playing somewhere else in Europe, you know? Um, but yeah, AFL, AFL game, I caught a game. It was nice, crazy. It took me a minute to like realize what was going on to like understand the game. But uh, once I got adjusted, it was cool. Like I figured out the point system and just seeing those guys out there competing was, was awesome. Never seen nothing like it. One thing I'm really curious to find out is like, oh, what is the biggest difference between the NBA and the NBL in terms of skill level? I would say there's more athletic and quicker, faster, and like, I would say maybe talented guys in the NBA. You know, everybody's a star in the NBA, but um, here in Australia, it's more like a, a, a team game. Um, you got to really think the game. You can't just rely on athleticism and, and skill and stuff. You really got to focus. Um, in the NBA, it's different spacing. Um, it's wide open, so it's, the court is not as clogged. Um, over, here in Australia, the court is, more, is is clogged more on the defensive end. So you got to really just take your game to an, another level. You got to really, really be able to play in those nooks and crannies and play in the gap and make the right read. It's, it's quicker here, whereas in in America, you have more space and time to think. And I know one thing that a lot of people talk about when they play in Australia is that it's quite physical. Is is that one element that oh, you know? Oh no, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely physical here. Uh, a lot of a lot of strong guys, like Australian strong guys. You got guys from New Zealand, also strong guys. So it is very very physical. And the left, the refs let let things go. They don't really call much. So you gotta be you gotta come with it out here. And who's impressed you the most in terms of NBL players? Um, I like Bryce Cotton a lot. Um, Jalen Adams. There's a lot of it's a lot of tough guards in in the league this year. So every night, you know, you are going against somebody that's tough. You know. Um, even in practice, it's guys like every day we bring it in practice. The young guys going going against me every day, and they really push me to become a better player. And it starts in practice, so they make the games easier, you know. 
And today you got the Yeezys on, so I know you're a fan of, of shoes. In terms of playing basketball, what, what shoes do you love playing in the most? All Kobe's for sure. All Kobe's. Um, it's just the most comfortable shoe, different colorways, and and it's, you, you represent in somebody, you represent greatness out there on the court, so that's why I, I mess with Kobe's. And has someone given you like an amazing piece of advice for you know your basketball career? Anything that stands out? Um, I would say maybe in high school, just just being a regular student. My my first day in school, uh, the headmaster said um, said you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I just that's something I just carry with me in life. You know, with every person that I meet, whether it's in Australia, Turkey, Spain, or or America, like just. Every person I come encounter with, you know you've got to just make a strong first impression because you never get that back. Now, when you're off the court, do you get much of a chance to, you know, watch like YouTube or listen to podcasts? Are you, are you into that at all? Uh, I haven't seen uh, many like podcasts and stuff. Uh, I, I keep up with like some basketball podcasts. JJ Redick has one. Um, Matt Barnes and uh, Stephen Smith have one. So I, I check in with the All The Smoke. Um, yeah, pretty much that. Oh, that's cool. And look, in terms of social media, are you someone that enjoys social media like Instagram and uh, you know putting yourself out there a little oh, bit? Yeah. It's definitely a great tool to you know promote yourself and promote what you're about and and promote your brand and, and just you know keep marketing yourself and it's a great tool for that so I'm uh, definitely on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. And what's your Instagram handle? Uh, underscore Xavier Muffer so everybody make sure you follow me. All right Xavier thanks so much for coming past today man it's been a pleasure. It's been great man thanks for having me.